Uh, it's Dr. Rick Wallace here. I want you to take a real quick ride with me, if you will. Um, before we get started, don't forget, uh, we're still in the midst of a fundraiser for the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, and we would definitely appreciate your support. You can go right there to the, the description box and see how you can support in ways that you can donate uh, and contribute. Um, so definitely do that. Look. I am a movie fanatic. I love movies of all kind. I always have. Uh, I enjoy the entertain entertainment aspect of movies, but I also go for the content. And I don't assume that because a movie has a certain theme that it doesn't have something uh, that I can learn from it or maybe one line that will challenge me to think. Some of my greatest aha moments have come from movies that I've seen. Some of my most inspiring quotes were also extracted from movies that I watched. But one of the most interesting movies for multitudinous reasons is The Matrix, the first one. And one of the most unique relationships within the matrix is that between Morpheus and Neo. And when I'm watching this relationship, there's a point that the, the light goes off, that aha moment that I was telling you about. And it's when Neo discovers he knows Kung Fu or karate or whatever martial art uh, that they're actually uh, doing in the movie but there's this point where he realizes that he's a skilled fighter now the first thing that comes to mind as i'm pondering this is did neo meeting and engaging morpheus uh, acquire a skill through morpheus or was the skill already there and we're going to call the skill a gift a purpose uh something special within and we're going to say was it always there well i came to the conclusion that the skill was always there so what was morpheus's role or relationship in this morpheus came in and walked uh neo through the maze or the labyrinthine corridors of discovery which expedited his growth into what he would ultimately become it was morpheus's presence that allowed the space for development in rapid fashion now let's make that relationship analogous to that of a young boy and a father or a male role model when you leave Neo, but we now are talking about a young boy, to himself, he may never discover his purpose. He may never find his path. He may never, ever get to the full potential of what he is to become. But when there is a male who has already navigated the labyrinthine corridors of life and has gone through the personal growth and development, moving through puberty into adolescence and on into adulthood and dealing with all the things that life will come, will have come at him. And he's able to sit down. He's familiar with things that are new to the boy so he can explain the feeling that he's getting he can sp explain why he's frustrated he can explain why his voice is changing he can explain why there are becoming such distinct differences between him and 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 his female peers and he'll go on and on but the thing is when the father is present it stops a lot of the mis mis misdirections and the erroneous turns and the poor decision making because now there's someone there who serves as a map to your destiny. And that's what fathers are. That's what male role models are. That's why it's so important uh, to have men in the life of boys. We become so frustrated with where our boys are at. It's like not having fathers in the lives of children is like expecting Neo to be Neo without Morpheus. And when I looked at that, I'm like, hey, 
we are missing it. Our men are the maps of our boys' destinies. And they can unfold it. They can look at it. They can navigate. They can say, okay, we don't turn this way. There's a dead end. We don't turn this way. We'll fall off a cliff. We don't turn this way because there's some uh, treacherous terrain awaiting us. But here's a path. And they go down this path. We have got to do a better job of providing our young black males with maps. When I thought about the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, it was like we need to be a guiding force. We need to be able to present to our young black men an example of what manhood looks like. We must also be there to answer the many questions that young men have about where they're going and what's required of them and how does it look and feel when you get there. And we would have these discussions uh, called the talks my father never had with me. And the thing is, you will be surprised at how their minds work. You would be surprised at the way that they move and the way that they think and what uh, they are wondering and pondering and the, 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 the desires they have deep within but they're afraid to bring to the surface because the streets don't receive those types of dreams. The streets don't support those types of dreams and, and so they keep them suppressed and they wonder. And the beautiful thing about it, that should be a man there to nurture it. That should be a man there to affirm it. So much of what helps a young boy become a man is the affirmation from another man. We've lost ourselves. We, we've become aloof. We've become distant. We've become callous. We don't know how to love on one another. We don't know how to love our own sons. We are afraid of the intimacy of, of, of loving our male progeny. We are afraid of connecting at a level where we have to feel. We've been taught not to feel for so long that we don't have the ability to bond. Oh, we've got to do better. There's got to be a connectivity. There's got to be an understanding. You see, it's, it's so much more to manhood than providing. We are the source of the identity of our children, and we are going to have to be in a position to provide the very necessities of their development, or we are going to consistently run into what we're seeing now, the failures of our roles. And the outcomes in the outcomes of the lives of young black males. See, we can sit up and we can shrink ourselves back into our little corners and say, not my problem. I'm doing okay. But you are more than you. You are a representation of the future of our race, a representation of the future of our people. You are a part of the community. You should be in a role of leadership. And when it comes to young black males, we should be supporting and promoting positive male behavior, the growth of black manhood within young black males by first modeling it, by then, uh, and then after that, making ourselves available and then by holding them accountable. It was just something that I was sitting up and pondering, but what we are going to have to do is we're going to have to acknowledge that we can't sit up and leave these boys with no map and expect, and expect them to get to their destination when there are so many pitfalls, so many detours. Uh, so many obstacles and so much rough terrain for them to navigate. Some will ultimately find it because it's just not uh, not finding it is, isn't an option for them, but so many more will fall by the wayside. So many more will take a wrong turn. So many will fall off a ledge. So many will be, 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 be destroyed by rough terrain and we can help them 
get around that, but we are going to have to be available. We are going to have to be invested. We are going to have to be more committed than we've ever been in the past. This isn't about ease. This isn't easy. It's not going to be easy, but what it is, it's possible. And our people are depending upon it because I've said this a bunch of times in the past and I'll be done. I've said this before. We will only get as high as our women can spiritually elevate us. And we will only get as far as our men can physically lead us. This is about the understanding that it takes both the spiritual uh, prowess and, and, and discernment of our women and the physical force and commitment and protective nature of our men and we have to be moving both spiritually and physically upward and forward. And if we don't get that, we're going to see worse days than we're seeing now. And our babies are going to fall by the wayside. We shouldn't want to fail these babies. I'm so sick and tired of hearing some of the stories I hear. It's up to us. So once again, I'm challenging you. Let's, let's step up. Let's, let's do something extraordinary. And men, we can do this. Um, if you want to learn more about what we do at Black Men Lead, uh, the link is going to be in there. Don't forget, we also need support. But whatever it is, understand that we're not going to get there by wishing and hoping. This is going to take some work. This is going to take some commitment. This is going to take the planting of seeds and the nurturing and the cultivating and the covering. And I'm here. I'm here for it all. And I hope that I am attracting others who are willing to be here equally. And on that note, I'm out of here. What the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.